two weeks, the town of Petaluma, virtually everyone who lives or works here, has been consumed by the kidnapping of 12-year-old Polly Class. The Polly Class case really changed everything. The case has generated enormous local and national publicity. I think it's so important that we just find her as soon as possible. Polly's case was huge because of how it happened, because of, of where it happened. This is a small town coming to grips with the idea that the problems of the world have come to the front door. We should tell a story, not only about the case itself, about the crime itself, but the impact. Polly's legacy is that, you know, she changed how the FBI investigates crime. 12-year-old Polly Hannah Class was in her own bedroom Polly having Class a slumber party snatched with at knife point from her bedroom. Polly's kidnapping was a real wake-up call for a lot of parents that were so lulled into safety. The suspect tied and gagged the girls while Polly's mother slept in another room. How could this have happened? When her mother was right there, how could this have happened? It's your worst nightmare. It shocked the country. It happened here in Petaluma. What was it like, like, when, right before the kidnapping happened? Just like this. A neighborhood community, people walking their kids and their dogs without any concern. It, it was just a typical American neighborhood, wholesome and robust. So let's start by setting the scene a little bit. Tell me a little bit about Petaluma. Well, Petaluma is a, rather a small rural community that is, is so all-American. It's morning again in America. It was featured in one of Ronald Reagan's campaign ads. At that time, it was a very rural town, about 50,000 people. It was kind of an all-American town. You know, American Graffiti had been filmed in Petaluma. I'll call you later. Peggy Sue Got Married was filmed in Petaluma. Really small-town Americana. Absolutely, absolutely. Nestled between wine country and San Francisco. Exactly, yeah, 30 miles north of the Golden Gate Bridge. But it's an entirely different world, known for its eggs, known for its agriculture, known for its cattle farms. I am Annette Nelson, and Polly was my best friend. We all felt safe in Petaluma. Everyone seemed to let, you know, leave the doors unlocked before cell phones, so we all just kind of left notes for our parents. It must feel surreal that it's been 30 years. It feels very surreal. I, I have no idea where any of that time went. I, I really don't. I, I can't explain it. I'm sure in many ways it feels like yesterday. Well, it does. I mean, just having, you know, these recurring thoughts that I'm having brings it even closer than yesterday. It all began in 1981, when Polly was born to Mark Class and Eve Nichol. Well, that was the greatest day of my life. The day that Polly was born gave me new meaning in my life. It taught me unconditional love. The day you became a dad. The day I became a dad, and I, I was really good at that. She was daddy's little girl. She was totally daddy's little girl. There's no question about that. As parents, Mark and Eve were a great team, but as a married couple, not so much. Their marriage was faltering, and by 1984, when Polly was just three, they decided to go their separate ways. Where my marriage was really a total disaster with Eve, uh, our divorce was quite successful. Polly, she lived with, with my ex-wife up in Petaluma. She adored her dad and saw him at least once a week. Her mother remarried and uh, had a, a little girl named Annie. They shared a room in a very small Victorian cottage in Petaluma. And you co-parented quite well. I believe we did, yes. I chose that area because I thought it was the most ideal place. ABC News first spoke with Eve Nickel back in 1993. Eve, tell me about Polly. She is a incredibly sweet and sensitive and charming kid, She's a lovely kid. Polly was the girl who reminded everyone of someone they loved, whether it was a daughter or a friend or a niece. Polly was new at Cherry Valley in sixth grade, and she was in my class. And we met on the first day of school and just instantly had a lot of fun together. 
Holly was on the cusp between child and adolescent. She was 12 going on 13. She loved to play the clarinet and she loved to read. And most of all, she loved acting. She's uh, very musical. She loves to play her piano and her clarinet. She's really blossoming in terms of her friends. If you look at pictures of her, you'll see she just sort of shines through the celluloid. So on that morning, it was the first Friday in October, and Polly was really excited because her mother had said she could have a friend sleepover. The plan for October 1st was hatched at lunchtime that day. We're all going to ask our parents, and we're going to have so much fun. And then I wasn't able to go that night. I was getting over a cold. In the early evening, around 6 o'clock or so, uh, Polly and I had our daily conversation. We, we pretty much talked every day. She was very excited about her slumber party. Yeah, she was having some girlfriends over. The last thing we said on our phone call was, uh, she said, I love you, Daddy, and I said, I love you too, baby. And those were the last words I spoke. The two girls who ended up going to the sleepover were Polly's sixth grade classmates, Kate McLean and Jillian Pelham. When Kate and her mother pulled up in the car, Polly and Jillian were poised on either side of the porch like two stone lions. Typical 12-year-old girls talking about you know, Halloween, and they were playing games and getting makeup on, just enjoying the evening, you know? Since it was a sleepover, Annie was going to sleep in her mom's room so that the big girls could kind of have their own privacy. And they were playing around there, playing a board game. It's a Friday night, not terribly late, you know, 8, 9, 10 o'clock on a warm October evening. A lot of people are out. At around 10.30, the girls were sitting or sprawled on the floor playing a board game. Polly stood up to go get the sleeping bags from the family room. And she opened the door, and that's when there was a man standing in the hall and he was holding a knife. It's impossible to imagine the utter fear and confusion that 12-year-old Polly and her friends must have been feeling in those moments. But what happened next would terrify parents across the country and catapult this case into the national spotlight. Not only were the eyes of the volunteers at the center conducting the search for Polly class riveted on the screen, eyes across the country were focused on the missing child. You just don't think about someone coming into your home. The family is asking anyone with any information about this kidnapping to please contact the Petaluma police. Agents had no connection to anyone who might want to kidnap Polly. They were really at a loss for where to even start. When you look at the boldness of this kidnapping, that's why this one is so rare. FBI agents and police spent today looking for evidence and canvassing the neighborhood. It was like a boogeyman came in and stole her out of that house. 